Hello, my dear DRRR student. Welcome back to Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction class. We are now in the second quarter of the first semester, school year 2021 to 2022. This will be our last quarter for this subject. Thus, let us thank the Lord for giving us another opportunity to learn. May I invite everyone to have a moment of prayer as we start our learning session. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you provide for us all. For your protection and love, we thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, I am your subject teacher, and here are my contact details if you need it. Feel free to communicate respectfully. With modern-day proof of plate tectonics from studies conducted by geologists around the world, it was found that the movements of the plates continuously shape Earth and as a result bring about earthquakes and form mountain ranges, ranges among others. As such, the entire Earth is subjected to these movements, making earthquakes and other geological hazards an ever-present danger. What does this information suggest regarding the location of the Philippines? Let's find out together. For today's learning session, here are our learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify various potential earthquake hazards, recognize the natural signs of an impending tsunami, analyze the effects of the different earthquake hazards, discuss the different geological hazard, and interpret different earthquake hazard maps. The knowledge of plate movements is necessary in studying geological hazards. This is because most of the earthquakes and volcanic activities occur along or near the boundaries of these plates. Any movement in those plates could be disastrous on the surface like earthquakes. Now, let us learn about earthquake hazards. Earthquake is a term used to describe both sudden slip on a fault and the resulting ground shaking and radiated seismic energy caused by the slip or by volcanic or magmatic activity or other sudden stress changes in the earth. The movement releases a stored up elastic strain energy in the form of seismic waves which propagate through the earth and cause the ground surface to shake. The anatomy of an earthquake. The initial movement that causes seismic vibrations occurs when two sides of a fault suddenly slide past each other, generating an earthquake. The focus of an earthquake is the spot where the earthquake began, while the epicenter is the point on the Earth's surface located directly above the focus. There are two types of natural earthquakes. We have tectonic earthquakes produced by sudden movement along faults and plate boundaries and volcanic earthquakes produced by the movement of magma beneath volcanoes. Earthquake hazards can be anything that includes a physical phenomenon associated with an earthquake that may produce adverse effects on human activities. Anything that can be moved fall off or to be toppled when the ground starts to shake and cause emotional and physical pain is an earthquake hazard. Earthquake hazards are generally classified as primary and secondary hazards. Under primary earthquake hazards are ground shaking, landslides, 
liquefaction, and surface rupture. While secondary earthquake hazards include tsunami, seismic, flooding, and fire. First, ground shaking. Ground shaking is a term used to describe the vibration of ground during an earthquake. Ground shaking is caused by the body waves and surface waves. As a generalization, the severity of ground shaking increases as magnitude increases and decreases as distance from the causative fault increases. This is an earthquake event with a magnitude 7.2 at Bohol last October 15, 2013. Next, landslides. Earthquakes can trigger landslides, especially in areas with water-saturated soil. Landslides may result in falling rocks and debris that collide with people, buildings, and vehicles. They also can block roads and disrupt utility lines. This is a magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake at Cotabato last October 29, 2019. Next, liquefaction. Liquefaction takes place when loosely packed waterlogged sediments at or near the ground surface lose their strength in response to strong ground shaking. Liquefaction occurring beneath buildings and other structures can cause major damage during earthquakes because water exerts a pressure on the soil particles that influences how tightly the particles themselves are pressed together. This is a magnitude 5.6 earthquake at Davo del Sur last July 9, 2019. Lastly, surface rupture. Surface rupture is an offset of the ground surface when fault rupture extends to the earth's surface. Any structure built across the fault is at risk of being torn apart as the two sides of the fault slip past each other. These ground deformations can cause severe damage to structures, roads, railways, and buried infrastructure such as pipelines. This is a magnitude 7.8 earthquake at Luzon plus July 16, 1990. Now, we go to the secondary earthquake hazards. First, tsunami. A tsunami is a series of enormous ocean waves caused by earthquakes, underwater landslides, volcanic eruptions, or asteroids. Tsunamis can travel 20 to 30 miles per hour with waves 10 to 100 feet high, cause flooding and disrupt transportation, power, communications, and the water supply. This is the magnitude 8.1 earthquake at Moro Gulf last August 17, 1976. Another one we have Saish. Saish is a series of standing waves in a fully or partially enclosed body of water caused by earthquakes or landslides. It causes moored vehicles to oscillate against their mooring cables and break free sites such as also may drown unwarned persons on piers or shores or shores. This is the magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake at Chile last 2010. Next, we have flooding. Earthquakes can indirectly cause flooding in a number of ways such as triggering tsunamis, destabilizing dams, breaking and or lowering protective leaves, the earthquake disrupted the ocean floor, creating a tsunami, damaging buildings, crops, and animals, and maybe sweeping away or drowning people. This is the magnitude 6.5 earthquake at, Boho, at Bicol last August 18, 2020. Last is fire. Earthquakes can cause fires by damaging electrical power or gas lines in the event of water means rupturing and the loss of pressure, it may also become difficult to stop the spread of a fire 
once it has started, they can be a serious problem especially if the water lines that feed the fire hydrants are broken too. This is the magnitude 7.9 earthquake at Japan last 1923. Now, we learn PHEBOX. The PHEBOX, or the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, is a service institute of the Department of Science and Technology, DOST, that is principally mandated to monitor volcano, earthquake, and tsunami activity, and issues warnings as necessary. It is mandated to mitigate disasters that may arise from such volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tsunamis, and other related geotectonic phenomena. The current director of the PBOX is Dr. Renato Solidu. Earthquake Intensity and Magnitude Magnitude is the energy released by an earthquake at the focus. It is calculated from earthquakes recorded by an instrument called seismograph, while intensity is the strength of an earthquake perce perceived and felt by people in a certain locality, intensity is generally higher near the epicenter. The Richter scale is an absolute scale wherever an earthquake is recorded. It will measure the same on the Richter scale and, secondly, the modified Mercalli scales measures how people feel and react to the shaking of an earthquake. It is sufficient to distinguish between small, moderate, or large earthquakes. There are two ways to describe the strength of an earthquake, magnitude and intensity. Here is the earthquake magnitude and intensity scale used by the PBOX. The highest for the magnitude is 8 or greater, and the lowest is 2.5 or lesser. For the intensity scale, it is up to 10. Um, we use the Roman numeral to measure intensity. Very destructive and devastating it are within Roman numeral 8 and 9. Seismograph or seismometer. A seismometer is the internal part of the seismograph which may be a pendulum or a mass mounted on a spring. However, it is often used synonymously with seismograph. Seismographs are instruments used to record the motion of the ground during an earthquake. Hazard maps are essential in understanding the risk present in a certain area. It shows the different degrees of hazard usually classified into low, moderate, and high degrees. Here are some examples of earthquake hazard maps. An extra effort on your part, be focused on the prevention or mitigation measures before an earthquake occurs. Since there is no way that earthquakes can be predicted, preparing to lessen their impact should become the priority. Choosing the correct area to build infrastructures based on hazard maps should be one of the foremost preventive measures. Checking the stability of objects that are hung on walls or inside cabinets could also mitigate the effects of an earthquake. Here are some of the things that you could do before, during, and after an earthquake. The most important thing that you should do to respond during the shaking is drop, cover, and hold on, and stay in safer part of your room. Always remember to stay calm and alert. Watch out for falling objects, glass, windows, shelves, cabinets, and other heavy objects that may cause injury. And after an earthquake, evacuate as soon as the shaking stops and take the fastest and safest way out. 
expect for aftershocks and be updated using your radio or any broadcasting instrument. Okay, so that ends our discussion. For your task this week, answer lab of lab. Entitled, make your own seismograph found on page 116A of your textbook. See the attached rubric for reference. I will explain better your activity during our synchronous discussion. Okay? Now, let us recall the DRRR concepts you gained from our discussion. You can create a graphic organizer in your notebook if you want. We learned that earthquake hazard is anything associated with an earthquake that may affect the normal activities of people. This includes surface faulting, ground shaking, landslide, liquefaction, tectonic deformation, tsunamis, and sites. Taking part in preventing and mitigating the effects of an earthquake should be everyone's concern. The Manila Trench has the capacity to move or trigger a tsunami about 3 to 5 meters high. Knowing what to do before, during, and after an earthquake could save lives. A 72-hour survival kit is necessary in case of a disaster. Let us get to know one influential Filipino in the field of DRRR. He is Alfredo Mahar Francisco Amante Lagmay or Mahar Lagmay. He was born October 4, 1966. He is a Filipino geologist. He is the executive director of the Project NOAA or the Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazards and a professor at the National Institute of Geological Sciences of the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Lagmay was recognized for his significant and pioneering research contributions toward understanding the multifaceted aspects of natural hazards including volcanic hazards, tectonics, persistent scatter interferometry of faulted regions, and natural hazards management, particularly as they apply to the Philippines. Hello once again. As we continue to learn in this new normal, let us be guided with this Bible verse from James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. In relation to our lesson, how will you show resiliency during natural disasters like earthquake? You can put your insight in the attendance check of your SMU LMS account. Let us now have our closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Mary, seat of wisdom, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the mode of submission of your outputs, you can communicate with me through our FB Messenger or our class GCAP. Submit your requirements in the SMU LMS on time. Feel free to keep in touch always. May Mary, our mother and patroness, inspire you always. God bless and keep safe. See you in our synchronous meeting. Goodbye!